Hello again everyone, so what I'm going to be doing today is talking about the NBA Finals, a little bit of a preview, review, some chats, some thoughts on how I think this series is going to go, um, how the teams have gotten to this stage, um, and just my thoughts on that. So first let's get started with last night and looking at the 108-100 overtime win for the Warriors. Um, looking at Cleveland, LeBron James, fantastic night, 44 points. Uh, eight eight boards, six assists. That's fantastic. Irving, even playing through injury, still chipped in with his 23 points, seven boards, six assists from him. Uh, my boy from Canada, Tristan Thompson, stepped up big on the boards with a 15 rebound night. That's going to be key going forward, I think, in these playoffs. Is he's going to be a, a a key for them. I think everybody looks at Cleveland. They talk about James. They talk about Irving. Before the season started, the signing of Kevin Love, obviously James coming back. I think Tristan Thompson kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Which I think is unfortunate because I think he's a huge talent and going to be a big reason if Cleveland can win this series and bring a championship back to Cleveland. He's going to be a big part of that. Um, so that that's uh, that's how those guys performed last night. Their bench really didn't show up. It was almost uh, obsolete in their performance last night. They they only went with the uh, eight man's eight uh, eight man rotation last night. So only three guys coming off the bench, but those three guys combined for nine points, six boards, four assists, and that's not going to get it done um, for sure. Um, so going ahead into game two, maybe Perkins, we'll see some playing time from him. Maybe we'll see some playing time from Marion. We'll, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see what, what Cleveland does. Cause obviously they're going to want to reassess something with that. Um, throughout these playoffs, James has been averaging almost a triple double, 27.6 points per game, 10.4 boards, 8.3 assists. He's going to be the driving force of this team. He is the face of the franchise. You know, he knows how to win championships. He knows what success is. And uh, he's a four-time MVP, so obviously he's great. He's you know one of the best players in the league, arguably the best player in the league. Um, and he's going to be you know the key for them winning, but not the only reason why they win a championship. You know, Kyrie Irving playing through an injury, which I think is more severe than he's going to let on. I'm I'm expecting he's going to be having some off-season surgery. I'm going to say that right now. Um, it, throughout these playoffs, he's been averaging 18.7 points per game with about three boards and about four assists. So he's a solid he's a solid two option for that team for sure. Um, but like I said, Thompson again, Kenny is going to come out and be very proud of this kid. Um, he's been averaging almost a double double himself with 9.4 points and 9.9 .9 boards throughout these playoffs. Last night going off with 15. So I think he's going to be a real big key in them going forward. Um, to win this championship. Uh, Shumpert and Smith, uh, depending on which one of those two guys start, I think very similar numbers, 10.1 uh, points, 13.5 points respectively between the two guys. They both average about five five boards a game and about uh, one and a half assists. So it'll kind of be a toss up to see which one of those guys starts. Um, who's the better guy coming off the bench is the number six. Um, we'll see um, how, how that works going forward. Um, Del Vadova, Obviously, uh, has been playing playing great. Good young player. He's averaging seven points a game, kind of thing. A uh, solid guard option. I think he's got a lot a lot of room to grow, um, for sure. And he's got some great guys in Irving and James to learn from. So we'll see how he does going forward in his career. Um, but I think Cleveland's got some something to look at going forward um, in this series. Maybe some things has changed. Maybe you can't win win with only an eight man rotation. Maybe you need to have a nine ten man rotation like the Warriors have been doing. So, segueing into the Warriors, um, and how they did last night, obviously, uh, Clay Thompson, 21 points, 6 boards, and just 1 assist. Uh, Curry had 26 points with 4 boards and 8 assists, so that's all solid, solid production from those two guys. But the big difference in why I think the Warriors won last night um, was the bench play. Obviously, they had 5 guys coming off of their bench compared to only the 3 from Cleveland, but those 5 guys combined for 34 points, 19 boards, and 8 assists. That's what you need from your bench. If your starters can go out and get you 70 points, 75 points, your bench goes out and gets you 30, 30 plus, you're going to win some games that you play some solid D. And that's and that's what I think is going to be the key the key throughout these throughout these playoffs. If Cleveland's bench only continues to go out and get them 10 points combined a game, this series could easily be done in a sweep. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think the bench, obviously, for Cleveland knows they have to step up, and they played horribly last night. Um, so we'll see what happens with them there. But the Warriors were the number one team in the West. They had a 67-win season, um, which is unbelievable. Um, and and I think that's key as to why they're such a successful team. Obviously, they got the MVP in Curry, who's been averaging 29.2 points per game in these playoffs, which is fantastic. Um, Green, um, I think, is, is a great player for them. He's been averaging more rebounds per game in these playoffs than LeBron James. Uh, he's averaging a double-double, 14 points per game and 10.8 boards compared to Le the LeBron's 10.4. So very similar, but 
averaging more boards than LeBron James is awesome for him. Uh, Barnes has been averaging 11.3 points per game with five boards. Bogut's been averaging 8.6 boards coming from the center position, so so that's going to be key going forward for them there. Is you got two guys in Green and Bogut who can average 10 boards a night, pretty close to it, um, and that's going to be important going forward. Looking at their bench with Barbosa, Iguodala, Livingston, you got some veterans in there. Iguodala's been having great, great playoffs uh, coming off the bench with 8, point, 8 points per game with 4 boards and 3.4 assists. Um, Barbosa's a great veteran, chipping in with his 5 points per game. Same with Livingston at 5 points per game. So we'll see we'll see how that bench does going forward. I think obviously basing it off of last night, that's the key is your bench has to play well. Um, the Warriors did have 14 more regular season wins than the Cavaliers. So if you were to say who's the underdog, who's the favorite, I think that's going to be part of the reason behind that is they had 14 more wins than the Cavs playing in the West as well. It's very impressive that they had that many more wins compared to Cleveland. Um, so that's maybe why Cleveland's going to be considered an underdog in my opinion compared to the Warriors. Um, if you were to go along that storyline and who's the underdog who's the favorite that's what my thought would be with that looking at both teams and the roles they had to take to get here neither of them had a very you know too many deep six seven game series they both swept their first round opponents with the Cavs sweeping the Celtics and the Warriors sweeping the Pelicans the second round was kind of where some um some heart rates might have been going a little quick for Warriors fans and Cleveland's fans uh Cleveland did beat the Bulls but that was in six games the Warriors beat the Grizzlies again in six games, so I think that was kind of where um, the favorites in each conference, maybe they were going to get taken taken uh, down a peg um, and not make the finals was going to happen in that round. When you got to the final, the conference finals, um, I think the, the Cavs just proved that the Hawks, even at the number one seed, just don't have the star power to, beat, to play with the Cavs and beat the Cavs because they swept the Hawks. Um, and then the Warriors beat the Rockets in five. So the Warriors did have one more game compared to Cleveland to get to this stage, but they're both fairly well rested, I think. Um, you know, obviously at this stage of the season, guys are going to get banged up, you know, but that that's what you play for. You you play through the pain uh, to get that championship. And I think I think that's why um, I think that's why Kyrie's going to continue to play as well as he can in Cleveland. Um, I'm expecting some offseason surgery to come for him. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. I, I don't think that knee is as great as people are thinking it is. I think he's playing through a lot of pain, but it's the finals. You do that. Um, you know, I'm sure there's guys that are banged up for the Warriors as well. You play through that pain because you're in the finals. You know, who knows when you're going to get here again. Um, you know, some guys play their whole career and never win a championship. Steve Nash, for example, talking about Canadian players. Um, and, you know, as great as individual stats are and winning MVPs and stuff, I could virtually assure you that Curry would give up his MVP if the Warriors won the championship this year. You know, it's going to be great if you can have both, but if given the opportunity to say you can win the championship, but you can't be the MVP, he's probably going to say, well, give me the championship um, kind of thing. Um, it, at least that's what I would do if I was a player. I think, you know, like playing in the NBA, it's a team sport. Playing in any sport, your goal is to win, you know, a, a, win a title, whether that's the Super Bowl, whether that's the Stanley Cup, whether that's the NBA title. That's your goal is to is to is to win that, and because uh, that that's what cements your cements your legacy is. You know you can go on and win tons of MVPs, be a twenty five plus point per game kind of guy, um, face of a franchise and stuff. But if you've never won a title, um, it's gonna it's gonna affect your your legacy, affect how you're remembered in a league kind of thing. Um, so so we'll see what happens as this as the series continues. L looking at game one. Um, some things that both teams are going to work on. Obviously, the Cavs bench has to step up. But after after the first quarter, the Cavs were up 29-19. So they had a 10-point lead after the first quarter. Then the second quarter comes around, and the script is practically flipped because um, uh, Golden State has 29 points to 22 for Cleveland. So now Cleveland's only going into halftime break up three, even though they were up by 10 after the first quarter. Um, so I think that's definitely something the Warriors are going to want to fix is they're not going to want to go down 10 points after one after the first quarter in Game 2. And the Cavs also aren't going to expect or want their bench to only be chipping in with nine points and six boards with four assists. Their bench has to step up and do more than that. Um, as great as LeBron is, one guy isn't going to win you a title, and you can't expect LeBron to go out and get 40-plus points per game. He definitely has the ability to do that, and it wouldn't surprise me if he does. But he shouldn't have to go and do that. Um, you know, As a star, he should be able to get, go out and get you 25-30, to 30, and then your other guy should be able to get you a win. Um, but if James has to go out and get you 40-plus points a night, that's a lot of pressure on him. I'm sure he relishes it and can definitely do that, but 
your bench has to step up. So those, are, I think, are a couple things that both teams are going to want to work on. Um, obviously, going into overtime, like I said, I think this series is going to have a lot of tight games. It's going to go deep. Um, but in overtime, you know, 10 to the point differential there in overtime for Golden State. So they were able to dig down deep and find a way to get that win in the end. But you don't want to go down 10 points after the first quarter. So we'll see what happens when game two rolls around. Maybe we'll see some playing time from Perkins and Marion with Cleveland. Uh, the Warriors, obviously, going to want to play a little tighter in that first quarter. Thank you again all for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at gham614. And don't forget to check out uh, Celtics Nation 5 on Twitter as well. Green Runs Deep. we got a lot of great writers in there. A lot of great podcasts as well that you can check out um, where we'll be talking some NBA talks, some NBA Finals talks, probably a little bit of Celtics talk thrown in there every now and again. Thank you again. I really do appreciate all the support. And you can check me out next week where I'll be talking about Miami sports teams. So for you NBA fans, you'll be listening on the uh, Heat Talk next week. Thanks again. Bye-bye.